Good afternoon. Welcome to our Wednesday session. Of course, uh, this morning uh, you had off, as it were, because you went to the papal audience. And uh, we will finish the day with three, three, uh, th what's the word I'm looking for? Well, it's not speakers because of the Q&A. We get the idea. Three sessions. Thank you. Three sessions. Yes. Three sessions, uh, starting with uh, Father Carl Stellan. He was ordained by Archbishop Lefebvre in 1988. He is District Superior to Poland. And uh, he has written quite extensively on St. Maximilian Kolbe and uh, Our Lady Immaculata. And that is his topic for us today. St. Maximilian Kolbe and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Please welcome Father Karl Stalin from Poland. Your Excellencies, dear brothers in the priesthood, my friends, it's a great honor for me to have been invited to this conference and uh, my task is to explain you, or try to explain you, a uh, very outstanding personality, as he was named one of the greatest saints of the 20th century, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, and his uh, spiritual and uh, worldwide movement, the Militia Immaculate, the Knights of the Immaculata, and the relationship very deep relationship with the message of our, of our Lady of Fatima, especially her Immaculate Heart, and also, of course, all what she said in Fatima. This is very, very important for us, because uh, what I wanted to explain you this day is uh, that in my eyes, in my understanding as a missionary, first in Africa, in Gabon during nine years almost, and then in Eastern Europe during now already 18 years, I saw how important it is that the people know about Fatima, but it is also important that the people receive a very concrete and very, let me say, practical way how to live Fatima, how to understand the to put this message into concrete life. And I have not found any be any, anybody better than St. Maximilian Kolbe to do this, to have done this work. And it is up to us to gather his heritage and to continue it. Fatima, in my eyes, would be better, and even better not only known, but would be better understood and better lived if this complement of the Militia Immaculata would be known more. Saint Maximilian Kolbe was born on the 8th of January in 1894. It was just a normal child, a normal Polish child in a family working very hard in the factories. And this child was not very, very pious. This child was not very gentle. It was really a small, a small, and even a big problem for his, for his mother, Marianna, who told him one day, Raymond, this was his, uh, his, his name, his uh, uh, Christian name, Raymond, if you continue like that, it will be, go very, very bad with you. You must change. If not, I'm very worried. Well, Maximilian, the former uh, Raymond Kolbe, he, he, was, he was very concerned with that. With the, let me say, with the milk of the mother, he got the true Polish, let me say, devotion. Uh, Polish Catholic is devote, devotee of Our Lady. But when he heard that he was going to be a bad boy, he started to pray. He understood that now he must have a, have a help. And he started to pray. Very, very much. She went to the altar of Our Lady of Częstochowa in his home parish, and he spent hours there asking her that she may help him. And at that moment, he got the grace. He named the grace of his life. Only his mother told us about this outstanding event. 
We don't know when it was, about 10 years old, Raymond had a vision. Our Lady appeared to him and uh, she, <laughs> she showed him two crowns, the white and the red. And Maximilian Kolbe understood that the right was, as she explained to him, the martyrdom of purity, of chastity. The red was martyrdom of blood. Choose, she said. I take both, he answered. And this event marked his life, even if he really didn't speak about that, never. Only his mother. To her, he was obedient. She asked him, what about you? You changed so much. And the mother would have uh, probably the best doubts to say, my little Raymond has got crazy and each child would like to have a vision of Our Lady and would not have take, taken serious all that. But you know, the deep changing of this small boy who was so quickly upset, who was a man of battle immediately, he couldn't, he couldn't refrain his uh, anger. Now this man become meek as a lamb and become, he became really very, very, very humble, very, very open to the people and, uh, and he changed. And now it was clear for him. He said it from this moment on, it was a life for her. She became his queen, his hetmanka. And here we come first to the great understanding how Maximilian Kolbe had been formed. First, the heritage of Polish Catholicism. Polish Catholicism is, uh, Our Lady is in the center. This is the understanding that she, she changes lives and she had the, in her hands the whole history of his country. That's what he started to, te to learn when he became a Franciscan friar, when he, after a mission of the Franciscans, he decided together with his, with his brother to come uh, to the, to the uh, Lviv, Lvov convent and there to study. He there, he understood more and more how important she is. So, the first, what he got from his mother, from his parents, from the surroundings, is a deep love of her. And what he got from this vision is uh, that if one, somebody gives himself to her entirely and asks her really for help in his needs, she helps. And she helps so much that she can contribute and even produce an immense inner conversion of this soul. And that he felt and he realized in himself. This was the first, in my eyes, the first uh, approach, deep approach to, a ma to Mary uh, from the little Brian Kolbe. Let's go to the second part of his life. He is now a young friar. I guess he was 16 even years old when he entered this monastery. And he started. He started to read and to understand more and more the whole history of Poland. The history of Poland is a history of battle and a history of Mary. If you know the history of this country, there is no important point which had not been influenced and where the intervention of Our Lady wouldn't have been outstanding. And that is, was what uh, St. Pius X uh, uh, honored when he named Poland the bastion of Christianity. In fact, in Poland, the Polish country, the Polish Catholic nation, when became, after becoming Catholic, they stopped the invasions of the pagans from the east in the first part of the, of the second uh, uh, thousand years, and then Poland stopped the invasion of the Protestants, of the Swedes. And, that's the, and, what, and the one and the other, what is, is absolutely marked as a great miracle of Our Lady. What is important is that Maximilian Kolbe was uh, living, he started his life as uh, a young man in a, in a country which didn't exist anymore. For the second time, Poland was, divi was divided into three parts and Poland on the maps of geography, geography didn't, didn't exist anymore. It was part of Russia, part of Prussia and part of Austria. However, the Polish nation continued to exist. They overcame the first div uh, div division of the country thanks to Our Lady. 
and they were convinced we would overcome the second one, also thanks to Our Lady, which, was, which happened. And the heart of Poland for each Polish Catholic, Serce Polski in, in, in Polish, the heart of Poland is Our Lady of Częstochowa, the Black Madonna of Częstochowa. And here the people gather every year up to these days in immense pilgrimages, trying to give honor to Our Lady and asking the favor. And it's obvious that Our Lady keeps up to this moment the faith of many people somehow through this, her intervention and her presence, spiritual presence, as the heart of the country, the spiritual heart of the country. This is what Maximilian Kolbe, as a young friar, understands more and more. And now look, what was important for him is when he studies in the seminary, as a, in the minor seminary first, he sees that exactly that is the essence of the church. What Catholic Poland showed him and where the enemies came from all parts. Our Lady stood as the commander-in-chief, which is named, I say it already in Polish, Hetmanka, to guide the Polish armies, not only the, the, the fighting armies, but also the spiritual armies of praying and suffering and, uh, and uh, good Catholic people to overcome all these enemies. This is exactly what afterwards put uh, uh, Maximilian Kolbe into his Militia Immaculata, which is already the first point which links him very deeply to Fatima. Fatima is a very important, um, let me say, a very important uh, call of Our Lady to, to not to forget that here on earth we are in the church fighting and militant. It is there the devil. Uh, there are the heresies, the sin of men, and the betrayal is over, uh, uh, all over. And this is what Maximilian Kolbe learns from his own country. And he sees the great, the great help, the great solution, the great hope. On the one hand, we have these attacks of these people who want to destroy Catholicism. They want to destroy the country, but with the country they want to destroy the faith of the country. Because in this country, for a true Polish, it is impossible not to be Catholic. And now, you see, up to these days, this idea of this battle is marked by this desire that the Catholics have to share to promote the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. He must be king. Kingship means Conquer, conquer the world, conquer the world to save souls. So in the mind of Maximilian Kolbe, in the mind of uh, those people who were his predecessors, and of this whole Catholic atmosphere during a thousand years, it was this idea that here is the enemy who attacks, but we have uh, a bigger strength. We have a greater strength, and this is Our Lady. Through her, our Lord Jesus Christ will come. Through her, our, light, our Lord Jesus Christ will reign. And also, of course, he sees uh, Maximilian Kolbe, especially in these times when Poland is divided, the misery of the souls. He sees also what devastation had been made by those who wanted to conquer the country. What were these Swedes? What were these pagans from the East? What were these people from? What they had the, as ideals? It was anarchy. It was a forgetting about truth. It was a bringing in for, for, of, of error. And therefore, when he saw that these strengths are so overcoming, so strong, as we, he already, already saw also in all the other countries, when the Christian armies were not, were not sufficient and the strength of the Catholics to, to protect their country, it was the intervention of Our Lady who saved this country and who saved all, all, all people who came to her in order to apply for help against these enemies. Now, the little Raymond entered the seminary. This, uh, uh, this convent. And then he got a new name. Raimond became Maximilian. We don't know whether he, he chose this name, probably not. But this name is absolutely fitting for him. Maximilian is coming from Maximum. He, when you read his, uh, his books and his speeches, it's always 
everything, all, the whole world, all people, all souls, entirely, without any limits, everything for Our Lady. It is a maximalist, this Maximilian. And so he wanted also to, in his life to be her soldier. And this was exactly his temptation. In the convent, one day he thought, well, I have the blood of a soldier, a military blood. Wouldn't it be better, instead of sitting here and studying, to go out, to enroll in the army, and then to fight the true battles with the, with the, with the arms for Our Lady? He had this, let me say, this spiritual, this fighting nature. And only, uh, let me say, a very, very miraculous event prevented him from going out of his order. At the same time, when he decided already to go to the superior to ask him to be freed and to leave, in this moment his own mother, which never came to that place, just the second time maybe, entered this place, wanted to speak with him. Mother, what, what do you want? You come just in this moment, you know what is happening in me? No, I don't know, my friend, my dear, my dear son, but you know what happens to me. Now, your father, we decided when all the children now we have entered the Franciscans, we decided also in our old age to give ourselves to our Lord. And your father will become third order man in this congregation. I want to also to enter a religious society. And Maximilian Kolbe was standing like this. Just, just it fell down before him the temptation and said, well, that's a sign from God. Well, if we now all serve God, I cannot just go away. And so he, st he, he stayed and became afterwards his great Saint, Saint Maximilian. Well, Maximilian, and now you have to understand, to understand another thing. He studies first in Lvov, afterwards in Rome. And these studies in Rome, where he gets two doctorates, he becomes a twofold doctor, he, he will understand that the life, what he wanted to live for Our Lady, must be very deepened in Catholic theology, his studies. And what did he, does he discover? He discovered before the tabernacle, praying very much to our Lord in the Holy Sacrament, and he studied all the greatness of the miracles and the glories of Mary. The, Mariolo the Mario Mariology, he's just, let me say, drinking with a great, great uh, thirst and, and and, and learning more and more and more about her. And what he sees there is the understanding what exactly happened when he saw that his country was fighting so much against Protestantism. Here in the, he understood that what is really going on in this fight, to fight for our ladies, very wonderful, but also to know what is the deepest reason of this fight. This is so important, because if you don't know the, the reason and the, the means and the goal, you will not take the means to fight against. And now, Maximilian Kolbe understood that this Lutheran people, this king of Sweden who wanted to make Poland Protestant, that is not just another religion. He understood, of course, that the Protestantism was an attack to Our Lady, and it is somehow throwing out Our Lady from the heart of the people, making her a simple woman like the others. But he understood that what happened really in Protestantism, in this famous symbolical date, 1517, 1517, that was uh, that Luther brought to men a first exaltation, the first step of the cult of men. How? Not speaking about the heresies, but especially of the spirit of mind. Men become free. Man become now himself the judge of what he wants to believe. The only thing what he needs, sola scriptura, only the Bible. And the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, when he prays, will give him the interpretation of the Bible. In fact, this is to make anybody his own pope. Because if you, in this way, you start to decide yourself what you understand in the Bible, you, you understand also that everybody will understand the Bible as he wants. And this is the reason why we have so many Protestant sects. But, you see, for Maximilian Kolbe, it was the understanding here, 
The first time we got something like that, what we name afterwards human pride, then becomes more and more important. When he studies Our Lady and he sees what she does, she says, man is nothing in himself. And uh, the meditation of the Magnificat of St. Maximilian Kolbe shows that, that we have to humble ourselves. And she, who was exalted over all angels and saints and, and uh, heaven and earth, she was the most humble one. And she considered herself as a handmaid, as a nothing, who was the queen of heaven and earth. And this is what Maximilian Kolbe observed. So he learned, he learned in his studies in Rome, who is she? she he learned what is her role. And here opened his eyes to that what afterwards he names his great desire. To understand that all what God gave us, he wanted to give us through Mary. Actio Dei per Immaculatam, he said. And this is, my friends, absolutely important to understand that we, we have to, we have to, to understand this, this intervention of Our Lady in our life. He starts to see the whole work of salvation. When Jesus Christ came from heaven and earth, he sees, Maximilian Kolbe, that everywhere where you see Our Lord Jesus Christ, it is always the same. It is through her. Through her he became man. Through her he came on earth. He, he had, has hidden himself during nine months in, his, in her womb. During 30 years he was completely dependent on her. On her. He wanted completely belong to her, obedient as never a child was obedient to her parents as he was obedient to her. Totally consecrated to her, to his mother. That's what Maximilian Kolbe understood. Beyond the cross she became mother of men. Behold your mother, behold your son. He understood that wherever you look, very discreetly, but everywhere where Jesus Christ is, is Our Lady. He, the new Adam, she, the new Eve, and together they produce the new human mankind. The, the people, the saved people, the children of God, the members of the mystical body of, those, of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, my dear faithful, it is very important, my friends, that we understand this, what Maximilian Kolbe understood there. He discovered at that moment a great saint who became his spiritual father and became his guideline, Saint Louis Maria Grignon de Montfort. And through this saint, he understood also that if we, in our times, we want to save our souls, we have to do it through Mary. If God wanted to come to us through her, we have to go back to, to, to God through her. And this is the other side of the medal. God came through our, to us through her, as we see in the Revelation, and we come back to Mary, to God through Mary. Per Maria Matiesum, through Mary to Jesus. It's an old, an old uh, principle from the fathers of the church. And now what Maximilian Kolbe sees more and more, studying especially the, the latest events Consider uh, with Our Lady, the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, the apparitions of Our Lady in La Salette first, in Le Rue de Bac, the Miraculous Medal, and in Lourdes. He observes this, and with a great admiration, he comes nearer to her, to her. In fact, he discovers her Immaculate Heart. What does he discover? He discovers that this mother opens now in these latter times her heart, her innermost mystery, her deepest love towards children, to bring that to us, to open all the resources of graces God gave to her. And now you see what he, Maximilian Kolbe, understands in meditating all that all the time. He's only a young student somewhere hidden in the, here in the Via San Teodoro in Rome. But what in, in his heart is happening, it is absolutely great. He understands that Mindy, this, this Our Lady, she has received a special task to call towards us. She is our spiritual mother, so we have to be her spiritual children. But she is also she who has received from God all the graces, fullness of grace, gratia plena, que carito mene. This fullness of grace is now the essence what Saint Maximilian Kolbe meditates more and more. He sees what she does in Lourdes. He sees what she does in Fatima. And he answers to this famous, famous attack of the Freemasons, uh, of, the, of, the, of the Protestants, sorry, 
who say, you Catholic, you always glorify Mary. For us, for you, it is absolutely this divinization of Mary and to keep away Jesus Christ. You block the way to Jesus Christ because of your exaggerated devotion of Mary. And in fact, Maximilian Kolbe says, yes, it's true in Fatima, in, not Fatima, in Lourdes, and in all these places, Our Lady appears, and the people kneel down. You're right, Protestants kneel down for, for, before statues, before pictures, before images, and they make rosaries, and they, they pray somehow much more Our Lady than Our Lord, and their devotion is concentrated to her. And, uh, and you will ask, is this not the divinization of, Jesus, of, of her? To make her a, 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 a god, a goddess? And he answers, and this is maybe the deepest, he develops that during the, uh, the following years, but I just summon it up, what he started to think in, um, in, uh, in his studies of Rome. Afterwards, he understands that more and more. I just summon it up, and then he refle she reflects about the role of Our Lady. The role of Our Lady and her connection with her Divine Son, and with her divine son, she is uh, the choradamtrix, as we say it. Together with him, he, together with her, they operate, each one at his place, the salvation of human mankind. But she's also linked to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit comes on earth and he fills her. And Maximilian Kolbe says, she had received, as the fathers of the church always says, she has received the grace to become the Sponsa Spiritus Sancti, the, the spouse of the Holy Ghost, Sacrarium Spiritus Sancti, the sanctuary of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, in fact, he is the gift from the Father of the Son. And this gift from Father of the Son, which is the love of God himself, incredible words, God immense, his love as a person is given to us. Donum Altissimi, the, God, the gift of the God, Father and the Son. And this gift is received. He wants that the men will receive this gift. And Maximilian Kolbe says, there was only one person who received this gift, this donum, totally, because there was no objection, there was no sin, there was no obstacle, there was even no, no, no uh, way to, to question. She was totally opened, immaculata, without sin, without any, any no towards God, only yes, completely open to him. And you see, and this is what Maximilian Kolbe meditates all his life. The Holy Ghost can enter her and penetrate her fully. And in this way, as the Holy Ghost will accomplish the work of Jesus Christ, he will use the Immaculata, he will use Our Lady to do that work, what we learn when we learn about the Holy Ghost, when Jesus Christ tells us what the Holy Ghost is coming, what is the work of the Pentecost and the, 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 the Sacrament of Confirmation. All this, the Holy Ghost effectively works giving us these immense graces of him, this love of God, these graces of God, especially the graces of conversion and sanctification. So how do you reply, says Maximilian Kolbe and all the others after him, to this attack that Jesus Christ is the only uh, mediator between heaven and earth? It's true, because he alone came from heaven to earth and built the bridge, the builder of bridge, Pontem Facere, Pontifex, which means the, the high priest. And nobody else can overcome this abyss, infinite abyss between the majesty of God and our nothingness. But Jesus Christ came from heaven and earth, and, and now he was on earth. He came here and he operated his work of salvation. He gave himself, he offered himself, he instituted the church. He gave to the church the threefold, um, the threefold powers, the power of teaching of the truth, I am the truth, the power of sanctifying, I am the life, and the power of leading, I am the way. But how would the people far from God now come to, come to this place? How these people far from God somewhere in the world, in this darken of sin and error, would find this light? We can ask the same question today and all the time of the world. How does God match that? 
And so we, t- we learn that it's the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. You cannot know where he comes from, where he goes to. And he uses, this is the teaching of Maximilian Kolbe, he uses Our Lady. And through her, he touches the souls. And Maximilian Kolbe asks, why she, he uses a woman? Why he uses a small girl and not a strong man? He uses a small girl, he uses a woman, because he knows what is a mother. A mother who loves her children. A mother who wants that the poor children would be, would be saved. And so, my friends, you understand. Now, in this moment, you understand what happens. The Holy Ghost goes all over the world, and we know very well that he gives the grace to everybody that he may find a way to her, to God. How? We don't know. But always he will does, do that through her. And that is the reason when she appears all over the world. In Poland we have 100 great sanctuaries. You don't count them all over the world. All these apparitions of Our Lady during the many years, all the interventions of Our Lady, alone the miracles of Lourdes, people are kneeling down before this block, before this, this rock, and receive hundreds of millions, so many, many graces. Of course, it's not just a mere human being there. It's not just a hole with a statue there. It is the Holy Ghost who uses Our Lady. And when the people go to her and look to that, the Holy Ghost through her, Holy Spirit through her, gives them these graces. And they discover one after the other the truth. They discover our Lord Jesus Christ. They came to convert. And now Maximilian Kolbe understands, and he explains that afterwards in his, in, his, in his writings. Look all the apparitions. We have here some very outstanding things like the conversion, the conversion of Mexico and whole South America. It is incredible, my friends, that the, that, the, that the missionaries came, the Franciscans and all these missionaries with a great fervor, with the first uh, conquerors, Hernando Cortes and Pizarro and all these others, they built the churches, they were absolutely holy, saintly missionaries. Nobody converted. Nothing happens, almost nothing. And it had to happen during 16 years, such a work like nothing. Nothing happens. Nobody converts. However, these people bring the truth, bring the life, bring the Holy Mass, everything. They don't come. It was needed that the Holy Ghost used her. And, he used, and she used the small Juan Diego, and she appeared on the Mount Tepeyac. And you know very well, better than me, the history of Our Lady of Guadalupe. We know the effects. Whole America, South America converts within 30 years. That is what exactly you can see in this way Our Lady is the Mediatrix of Graces. And you see that in any, any apparition, any sanctuary, everywhere where you go is ex- exactly the same principles. Now you understand that Maximilian Kolbe is now very full of these ideas. And he is very much prepared to that what will come now. 1917, he is not yet ordained priest. Great famous year. It is in the beginning an anniversary in Rome, 75th anniversary of the miraculous conversion of a Jew who hated the church because his brother became Catholic priest. And this Jew, son of a rabbi, wanted to visit Europe, and in Rome he converts, Alphonse Ratisbon, due to the miraculous medal. No time now to explain this, this incredible event. But again, it is the manifestation that Our Lady brings these people, even the worst of all enemies of the church, with just one boring hint back to Jesus Christ. So, Maximilian Kolbe says, it's very clear. She has given to us all graces of conversions. It is all miracles you can expect from her. In fact, what did he enter? He entered the Immaculate Heart. He entered the heart of the mother who has this role on earth. She has received from God all graces of conversion of each man on earth, if only the conditions are fulfilled. And this will be the continuous work of of Maximilian Kolbe. This is in my eyes her Immaculate Heart. The heart of Mary she opens and she shows in Fatima is a very beautiful symbol. The symbol which means an incredible truth. And this truth, my friends, is that she has received all from God and she will give all what she can to her children. The loving heart of the mother who loves God with above all and who loves you and me above all. And that is her heart which wants to work. This will be Fatima 
1917 and all the time up the end of the world. So what will happen then? He is now prepared for the great shock. 1917, we have uh, uh, what we can name the great, great, let me say, confrontation. The confrontation, which for Maximilian Kolbe is uh, a discovering of the worst of all the enemies of the church. These enemies had been founded 200 years after Luther. Now we have been in 1717. Luther is 1517. Now we are in the year 1917. Three places, three dates, which are symbolic, which show exactly the increasing of these uh, powers of the devil. What is Freemasonry? Freemasonry as Maximilian Kolbe sees before his eyes, because this Freemasonry will now celebrate the 200th anniversary of its existence, and it chooses the way here in Rome. Rome will be, become the most important place of these celebrations. And what, she, what will be done there? You know very well what happened, that is very well known. I have it written in, 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 some, in, some, in, in, in this my small booklet about the Militia Immaculata. In Rome, the Freemasonry was celebrating their 200th anniversary. Everywhere you looked, you, you, looked, you could see flags and posters here in Rome, depicting St. Michael the Archangel being conquered and trampled underfoot by Lucifer. Long processions winded their way through the eternal city towards St. Peter's Square. The marchers sang blasphemous songs and carried banners with slogans such as Saturn will reign in the Vatican and the Pope will be his servant. That is what they explained here in Rome. There is nothing hidden. They told we have one enemy and this enemy is the church. Voltaire, once of the, one of the biggest of these men, before said, écraser l'infâme, you have to destroy this infame, this infame church, because it is the destruction of our ideology of cult of men. And this cult of man is nothing but the two words the devil said. I will not serve God, non serviam, and you, men, you will become like God. But this time you have this presented in a perfect structure which penetrates all regions of human being, from the political, science, everything, culture, and this is the greatness, under, uh, of course, and the, and the power of this Freemasonry. And now, my friends, you have to understand the following. We are already in the year 1917. This Freemasonry is working, has been working already 200 years. And now Maximilian Kolbe sees this. He understands that what happens here before his eyes, where the, in the holy city, the priests and the religious have to hide in their places, not to go to the streets. The streets, the public life is dominated by these enemies of the church who say to everybody, now it will be finished. This is the sign. We will conquer it. We will be the masters of the world. And you will see that. That is our slogan. So, and this is what they explained in 1917. And Maximilian Kolbe, he answered to that. He's just a poor friar. He looks on that, but his heart is burning full of the heart of Mary. And he asks himself, as a small friar, studying in the Gregorian University, is it possible that our enemies should make such a display of force in order to defeat us, while we fold our hands in our laps and do nothing? After all, do we not have much more powerful weapons? Can we not count on all on heaven, and especially on the Immaculata? Maximilian Kolbe is not a dreamer. He sees that the enemy has all power. He has all the enemy. He has all the money. We have mostly nothing. And that's what we have to understand. 1917 was this great year when Maximilian Kolbe founded this Militia Immaculata. It was ridiculous, humanly spoken. God chose seven men in this small convent, friars, and uh, the beginning was such a, a disaster that everybody was laughing on this poor Maximilian Kolbe because immediately, almost afterwards, having found that, he got mortally sick with a tuberculosis, and then the serial said, no, stop, don't continue. One year, silence. And he couldn't even speak about his dream to found an army of those who would now fight against this great enemy. And so, humanly spoken, it was finished, what he dreamt. He was just a dreamer. But that's now 
try to understand the deeper sense of that. I think he must understand deeper what is happening. 1517 Luther, 1717 Freemasonry, 1917, some days, months after us, October Revolution, communism, and the apparitions of Fatima, as you know very well. And on the 16th of October, he didn't know about the great miracle of Fatima. Three days after uh, her apparition, the last apparition in Fatima, in October 1917, he founded the Militia Immaculata. Our Lady is only one. She knew that this and that would happen. And it would happen in this year, and it would happen as a reply on the most mortal forces of those who want to destroy our Lord Jesus Christ and his church. And here we have the pure apparition of that, what St. John names the first beast. The first beast in the apocalypse is a worldly power who bring under the foot of the devil and his ideology everybody. Look what says, uh, um, what says the apocalypse. And I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having seven hands and ten horns. And upon his horns ten diadems, which names, which means the power, power of kingship, power. Yeah? And the power gave him his own strength and great power. And all the earth was in admiration after the beast. And they adored the dragon which gave power to the beast. And they adored the beast, saying, who is like to the beast? And who shall be able to fight with him? And there was given to him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Anyway, you know very well that this is the attack of the first beast to bring the whole world, let me say, the political world, the social world, the, 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 the world, the civil world, into the domination of the principles of the devil. You will be like God and will not serve God. Exaltation of men, cult of men. You can name that, maybe, uh, atheistic materialism. You insist on materialism, then you have Freemasonry. And you can say materialistic atheism, then you have communism. And this is actually are uh, the errors of Russia Our Lady pointed out in her great secrets. It's nothing like this. So you see the antagony. On the one hand, the immense power, the all-world all uh, taking power of the enemy of the first beast. One half of the earth will be, world will be dominated by communism, the other half of the world will be dominated by masonry, and these two will make just a, 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 a opposite power to erase and to crush the church, crush the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is written, this our leader, Lord Jesus Christ has predicted, and this they wanted to do. And on the other hand, you have a small friar with, with, with a tuberculosis who is dying, from, who is almost dying, who says, no, we have a strength against. Everybody laughs. You're crazy. Dreamer. But this strength is Our Lady. And in Fatima, Our Lady appears to three children. And these children will have to suffer. And also, many people will say, you are a dreamer. How will you speak about the errors of Russia? Do you know three, three children was this, what is Russia? You know what is communism? I have no idea. Anyway, Our Lady works through these small, poor instruments. You can ask. I don't know, but it's interesting. This time, the first time, Masonry makes its, its, its great events in Rome. Maximilian Kolbe receives his great inspiration in Rome. Maybe because Masonry, Rome against Rome, Rome in Rome, so it may be the enemy inside. Because we know very well that Freemasonry will always, with a great elegance, with a great smiling, come to you and say, let's sit down and discuss and drink a beer together and let's, find, let's have a fine life, which is the soft way of falling, falling apart from Jesus Christ. Fatima in Moscow is on the opposite of, 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 of Europe, just the opposite. You cannot make more opposition between two countries than Portugal and, and, and Russia which seems to be that this will be the open enemy. It will be shown that here is the open enemy who from outside will crush, try to crush the head and the power of Our Lady. Anyway, that is maybe a little bit uh, dreaming from me, but I think it's very interesting also to think why Our Lady chose to choose these places and in the same year. So, you know, Maximilian Kolbe, Fatima is exactly the same word. Only she can help. She did it always in the history and she will do it now because she's the mother. And when the mother sees that the children are more in danger than anyone, any, anyone before, 
you can imagine that she will certainly not abandon her children because they are now more in danger. If you have a good mother of a family and you see that the child is in a big danger, the mother will be much more concerned about the good of the child because she knows this my child is in danger. And this is happening in 1917. The mother, Fatima, she says, there is the solution of all these great trials, of this first and always afterwards of this first piece of the attack of the dragon. It is, according to Ap Apocalypse, only she. She has in her hands the woman clothed in sun. It is Our Lady. As she appears in Fatima, her deepest mystery, her Immaculate Heart. She wants in Fatima show her heart because she now she wants to give everything what she didn't give before. She gives everything of her mystery that we can really rely on that what Saint Maxime, Saint Louis Marie Grignon de Montfort exactly 300 years ago explained. In the latter times will come a time when Our Lady will be the last refuge and those who want to keep faith to her, this last flock, these poor, poor people who will be attacked by everybody, and the devil will double every day his efforts to destroy the church and the kingdom of God, she will just keep them in her hands and she will not allow that we will fall down. On the contrary, they will be the apostles of her in these latter times and they will be, make great conversions and they will outstand with a great holiness. Saint Maximilian Columbus says, I must be a saint, I must become a great saint. The children of Fatima says, we want to, do, do we also go to heaven? Yes, you will. But Francis will have to pray a lot of rosaries. This is exactly that. The children of Fatima want to become saints and want the other spring to holiness. Because according to Francis, that pleases God. And to God, uh, to, to uh, Yatsinta, this saves the people from the worst of all, from the fires of hell. And now, my dear friends, let's continue. It was 1917. Maximilian Kolbe, now, he, he could start. He cannot start. Five years of complete cross. Suffering, suffering, suffering. He's always sick. Months and years he has to spend in a sanatorium and the whole work, he starts just to begin, he starts to speak, to speak with the people, no chance, no chance, almost no chance. He's sick. By his friars he gets only humiliations. They really ridiculize him. And uh, when he explains that in 1919 to his friars, he has a, a series of conferences when he's happened not to be mortally sick for, for, for two weeks, we have very beautiful uh, words from him, and he says, what is the night? The night of the Immaculata. If she has an army, we must be her soldiers. And not only soldiers, we must be a knight. And the night is that we have to pray. And this prayer life, it is that what brings graces to the world. And the second what we have, we have to sacrifice. And therefore, all great work of God will be, will be, will be founded in sacrifices, as yesterday, two days yesterday, Michael Semin explained us so well. And this is exactly again what Our Lady said in Fatima. So you see, at any step, what Our Lady explains in Fatima will be again explained and very, very clearly and easily put into the hands of the knights. Look, says Maximilian Conde, what you have to do. You want to pray, but I exactly explain you what to pray. Ejaculatory prayers. Take your spiritual Kalashnikov, your gun, and then you start to bombard these people. Bombardment of people is you choke, you take this this this, this gun and then boom, 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 with 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 your ejaculatory prayers. And he did it, and he converted them. And then you have not to look whether you have pagans, other people, you just, you just bombard them with these prayers. And Our Lady will certainly, certainly through that bring the graces of that. Because what is the night? The night of the Immaculata. Here we come to a very important principle, what we have to understand also with Our Lady in Fatima. This principle is that what is God's way of working? God does not work generally himself alone. He always generally uses instruments. And so much he uses instruments that he want, does not want to work without instruments. Take away the priests, you will not have the church. Take away these instruments, human people, poor instruments, God will not work. That is his will. If he has his instruments, his work will come. And exactly that, what we have to understand, what is the night of the Immaculata. This is the genius, genius of Maximilian Kolbe to tell you, do you understand what is your role on earth? Do you understand what you have to do on earth? 
Do you understand what Our Lady wants to do you? She is the artist and she wants to paint the most beautiful pictures of all the souls. That is to say, she wants to give these graces, the graces of conversion, like Ratisbon, the graces of sanctification, as all the saints together, through her. But she wants to do that through her instruments. The, the, the artist, even if he is an absolute genius, he needs a pencil. And he will have paint only with his pencil. Without his pencil, without his hand, you will not paint anything. And this is exactly what Maximilian Kolbe explains. The night of the Immaculata, he wants to be a poor instrument in his hands. And if she gets this instrument, even poor as it is, and insignificant as it is, as it is she will work through this instrument. And that is what Our Lady said in Fatima. Pray, you poor instruments, small children, and you are people, and do sacrifices. And if not, if you do not, the people go to hell. Because nobody prays and do sacrifices for them. 19th of August, 1917. And this is exactly what Maximilian Kolbe, in his way, explains. The night of the Immaculata, so the instrument in her immaculate hands, he has so much to do. And through his small prayers, it's sufficient. A small adjulatory prayer, she works through that. A small sacrifice, she works through that. A handing down, handing to the other a miraculous medal, she works through that. As she said it herself in the Rue de Bac. All do anything with her and for her and for the salvation of souls, and she does through that. And then she will use this pencil and she will paint beautiful things. And you can answer, oh yes, I would be a pencil, but I'm unworthy. I'm just a poor sinner. I'm a wretch. I'm nothing. Oh, no problem, says Maximilian Kolbe. You know, if you have a painter who paints with beautiful pencils, a beautiful, beautiful thing, it's a great painter. Nobody will say, look, the, the tableau, and say, oh, what incredible pencil have made this. Nobody will say that. But if you, says Maximilian Kolbe, imagine that this painter would have painted this beautiful thing with a simple broom. Well, that's, 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 that's an artist. Incredible. The broom, that's me, says Maximilian Kolbe. The painter is our lady. This is what we have to understand. So, you see, this is the general teaching of the church which brings an immense sense in our life. We have to be her instruments and then we can do so much for the salvation of souls. Now Our Lady, what she wants to do, she wants to do that. This history of St. Maximilian Kolbe, in order to point it out, it is that what he gives now to his, his, his knights. He lives it himself, God showed him now first what he had to do, so he had to suffer so much during the first years and always up to the end of the life, up to, up to his martyrdom death, giving his life for a fellow, fellow prisoner. But he taught this to this, his knights and he showed them, now my friends, what you have to do? You have to discover that this burning love of Our Lady converted you once and you got an instrument and through this instrument God gave you through Mary these graces. If not, you would be pagan or if you would be in hell. Nobody of us have deserved anything from God. We are the worst of all, says Maximilian Kolbe. But you see what an outstanding miracle we have received. Who could think about that, he says often, that I had, could receive the grace to, con to know our Lord, to know the truth, the most holy trinity, that I am, have a mother in heaven who helps me and that, I am, that she guides me through this valley of tears to heaven. What a grace! And I have now, because she, lived, she, loves, she loved me when I was far from this, and I got this grace. And now she loves those who are now far from this, and they have also to get these graces. And she asked me, will you help me? What did she ask on the 13th of May to the children? Would you mind? Would you help me? Yes, we will, was well, her answer. And this is exactly what we do also. And this now, it was sufficient, the sufferings. The sufferings continue. In 1917, he starts the Militia Immaculata. 1922, he's getting out a little bit of his sickness. He's sent to Grodno. It's just at the end of the world in Poland. Now it's Belarusia. Three people they were, with nothing, with one baggage. In 1927, they have to leave Grodno. It was a Franciscan friary, because they are already 23. And they started a small newspaper, 5,000 copies in 1922. In 1926, there were 60,000. 1927, he starts to build the, the city of the Immaculata, Nipokalanov. He stays there during three years. Then he asks in his server to bring the Immaculata to the pagan people. He is sent to Japan. He founds the city of the Immaculata in Japan. 
Six years he works there. He comes back to Nepokalanov. Up to his death, he will guide Nepokalanov. In 1939, before the Second World War, in Nepokalanov we have 769 brothers, about 200 minor seminarians, and uh, issue the Night of the Immaculata with one million copies not counted in the other countries. Something like that never happened in the history of the church, at least in the latter times. And what does this mean? It is, what I wanted to explain, it is to put the spirit of Fatima in action. You know that what St. Maximilian Kolbe teaches us, it is not only that all these craters of Mary, and that is what we during our conference here, on conferences here, always discover from all points of view as we have in this schedule, as you see. We understand the greatness of Our Lady. All more and more we see that without her we are completely lost and with her we will win everywhere, everything. But what Maximilian Kolbe wants to add, uh, to add this, this great truth of the Our Lady, it is to be made into con concrete. That was immediately after the apparitions of Fatima, the desire of those who afterwards uh, started to great Marian movements, like the Legion of Mary of Frank Duff, or the Blue Army of Our Lady of Fatima, or the Militia Immaculata. Why? Because we are weak and we need a structure. We need that somebody guides us, wakes us up. If not, we get to sleep. And so, my friend, because we are so stupid and need guidance and we are weak, we have to need a structure. And St. Maximilian Kolbe gave us this structure. And he wanted that these movements would penetrate all the societies. And these structures, I have unfortunately uh, got the, um, the, 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 the order to stop in one and a half minutes. And this, I can only just refer on what I have the, the privilege to write myself. And everybody who would be interested, even if I have only not enough copies of this, I would like very much to invite you to take that, what I brought there along with me, a small presentation of this Night of the Immaculata as a beautiful structure. And I would say to the priests and the bishops and the faithful here, this is what we have to bring to our faithful. You know what I see? Young people in Eastern Europe. In Ukraine, this movement of Fatima and to bring yourself together, to become apostles, to bring the message of Our Lady to the people and to use the human possibilities. This is, this is what, what, what we have to teach. During these some years I had to uh, live in these countries, in Ukraine, we have a movement, uh, a movement with about 20,000 people who gathered around Our Lady of Fatima, asking the, our, the Holy Father for the consecration of Russia. 20,000 people who want to gather themselves in this idea that we have a big work to do. So I just can finish my, my, my speech asking you very much that you would, you would think about this. Our Lady in Fatima, she wants to act. And if you would like to know more about St. Maximilian Kolbe, we will discover an immense spiritual world and very, very concrete things and very concrete uh, way of life in order to put into practice and bring especially the young people again to the footsteps of Our Lady and to build this beautiful army of Our Lady of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and she, through them, will vanquish the Saturn and win the battle and at the end, her Immaculate Heart certainly will triumph. Thank you very much for your patience. Please, outside there is a, um, a, a small uh, table where you can uh, uh, have these things here and you can also contact me. I am already uh, always, always happy to uh, help anybody and uh, in, uh, I have also made uh, conferences and, um, and could also retreats in order to bring, especially to priests, this great message of Our Lady through Maximilian Kolbe. Thank you.